Hi mathematics fanatics, welcome to the road to excellence in numbers. Today, we will travel to the frequently used routes in counting the number of occurrences of an outcome in an experiment. But before that, let's have first this activity. The Can You Still Remember Me activity. Directions. Identify what is described. Number one, it is any possible result of the experiment. The answer is outcome. Number two, it is a process that has a number of distinct possible outcomes in which the result cannot be predicted with certainty. The answer is experiment. Number three, it is a measure or estimation of how likely it is that an event will occur. The answer is probability. Number four, it is the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. The answer is sample space. Number 5. It is a subset of the sample space. The answer is event. Did you get all the correct answers? Very good! Your perfect score makes me happy. Thank you! Let's have now the most commonly used methods of counting the number of occurrences of an outcome in an experiment. These methods are table, tree diagram, systematic listing, and fundamental counting principle. Let's have the examples. Using a table, we can count the number of occurrences of an outcome in an experiment. Suppose we toss two coins. How many possible outcomes do we have? When you toss a coin, getting a head or getting a tail are the two possible outcomes. The list of all possible outcomes for the experiment is shown in the table. Based on the table, the outcomes are head head or HH, -h, head tail or HT, tail head or TH, and tail tail or t t so when we toss two coins there are four possible outcomes another way to count the number of occurrences of an outcome in an experiment is using the three diagram the three diagram starts with one item that branches into two or more each of which branches into two or more and so on example we are going to form a two digit number from the digits one three and four how many possible outcomes do we have if no digit is to be used more than once let's have now the three diagram for the first digit we have one three and four since each number cannot be repeated, there are only two possible numbers to be used in the second digit. For instance, if 1 is used in the first digit, it will not be used anymore in the second digit. 
instead, 3 and 4 are the only numbers to be used in the second digit. Let's have now the possible outcomes. If the first digit is 1 and the second digit is 3, then the two-digit number is 13. If the first digit is 1 and the second digit is 4, then the two-digit number is 13. If the first digit is 3 and the second digit is 1, then the two-digit number is 31. If the first digit is 3 and the second digit is 4, then the two-digit number is 34. If the first digit is 4 and the second digit is 1, then the two-digit number is 41. And if the first digit is 4 and the second digit is 3, then the two-digit number is 43. So, if we are going to form a two-digit number from the digits 1, 3, and 4, there are six possible outcomes if no digit is to be used more than once. How many possible outcomes do we have if each digit is to be used more than once? Let's have now the tree diagram. Again, for the first digit, we have 1, 3, and 4. Since each number can be repeated, the three numbers can still be used as a second digit. For instance, if 1 is used in the first digit, it will be used again in the second digit as well as 3 and 4. Let's have now the possible outcomes. If the first digit is 1 and the second digit is 1, then the two-digit number is 11. If the first digit is 1 and the second digit is 3, then the two-digit number is 13. If the first digit is 1 and the second digit is 4, then the two-digit number is 14. If the first digit is 3 and the second digit is 1, then the two-digit number is 31. If the first digit is 3 and the second digit is 3, then the two-digit number is 33. If the first digit is 3 and the second digit is 4, then the two-digit number is 34. If the first digit is 4 and the second digit is 1, then the two-digit number is 41. If the first digit is 4 and the second digit is 3, then the two-digit number is 43. And if the first digit is 4 and the second digit is 4, then the two-digit number is 44. So, if we are going to form a two-digit number from the digits 1, 3, and 4, there are nine possible outcomes if each digit is to be used more than once. In counting, the simplest method is done by enumerating or listing all the possible outcomes. Example, suppose a coin and a die are tossed. What are the possible outcomes? And how many possible outcomes do we have? Again, when we toss a coin, the two possible outcomes are head or tail. And in rolling a die, the possible outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So when a coin and a die are tossed, the possible outcomes are H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, and T6. Therefore, there are 12 possible outcomes. Let's consider the last way of counting. Fundamental counting principle. This states that we can find the total number of ways that two or more separate tasks can happen by multiplying the number of ways each task can happen 
separately. If one thing can occur in M ways and a second thing can occur in N ways and a third thing can occur in P ways and so on, then the sequence of things can occur in M times N times P and so on ways. Example, how many possible three-digit numbers can be formed from the numbers 2, 3, 4, and 5? If any digit can be repeated and no digit is to be used more than once. Since any digit can be repeated in the first digit, second digit, and third digit, all numbers can be used. In the first digit, there are four possible outcomes. We have 2, 3, 4, and 5. Also, in the second and third digits, there are four possible outcomes. We now multiply. 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. Therefore, there are 64 possible outcomes if the digits can be repeated. Letter B, for the first digit, all numbers can be used. We have 2, 3, 4, and 5. For the second digit, there are only 3 possible numbers to be used since we cannot use any of the numbers more than once. For instance, if we use 2 in the first digit, then we cannot use it again in the second digit. Thus, 3, 4, and 5 are the only numbers available for the second digit. For the third digit, there are only two available numbers left. If 2 is used in the first digit and 3 is used in the second digit, then there are two numbers, 4 and 5, left to be used in the third digit. This means 2 and 3 cannot be used anymore in the third digit. We now multiply 4 times 3 is 12 times 2 is 24. Therefore, there are 24 possible outcomes if the digits cannot be repeated. Let us see if you really understood the lesson. I want you to do this. Let's check. Congratulations! You are all doing great! To ensure your full understanding on how to count the number of occurrences of an outcome in an experiment using different techniques, it is important that you are able to do the next activity. And this is your assignment. Wow! A fruitful road trip. Whichever path lets me realize the power of numbers. Hence, making me a certified human calculator. If you have the same feeling, then see you on my next ride to the world of mathematics. Bye and keep safe.